using the Avid CNC for cutting aluminum injection molds it does work, but it has its drawbacks. I'm gonna discuss the pros and the cons of using an Avid CNC machine. I really, this could apply to any gantry-based kind of woodworking CNC machine that you might see on the market. So the most important question is, can you actually cut aluminum with these machines? And the answer is absolutely yes. Aluminum is not really that difficult to cut for most CNC machines. I mean, even the smaller end ones that use the DeWalt routers that you can buy at Home Depot, right? Those can cut aluminum. It's usually a question of how fast it will cut, how accurate it will cut, and what the kind of workflow is. So you shouldn't really be concerned about, you know, can I cut aluminum with all of these machines? Shapoco, Avid, Phantom, whatever you got going on, right? It's not about actual cutting. It's about the whole process around that cutting. So what do I mean by that process? So in any CNC operation, there's generally uh, probing, right? And that's basically telling the machine where your stock material kind of starts, stops where it is kind of in relative uh, location to the overall machine. And you set that up in your CAD program, uh, really in your CAM program, then where you set it in your CAM program has to match where you're probing on your machine. Now, the Avid CNC machine only supports a corner touch probe. And this leads to uh, problems and inconveniences when you want to start doing multi-sided operations. And it's probably slightly less accurate than a 3D probe would be, which you would see on kind of, you know, big boy metal cutting CNC machines, right? I'm talking about your Heimer probes and, and things like that, right? 3D probes. And you can buy really inexpensive ones off of eBay and they seem to work just fine. Um, I tried to get one working on my Avid machine. There are people who say they have them working. I had nothing but nightmares with mine. Uh, you know, it would crash into materials. It would have all kinds of weirdness. I finally reached out to Avid and they say, look, man, we don't support 3D probes on that machine. Bummer. So that really limits you to kind of the material that you can cut, your operations, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, two-sided operations become an exercise in fixturing, right, where you kind of cut one side and you have to basically flip the part and have it end up in the exact same position it was for the first op and the second op, which usually involves some sort of pins and screws and all kinds of mess. And so I just kind of gave up on doing that, right? Molds, while they look better if you have faces on two sides and stuff, the really the money maker is the side with the mold cavities in it. So at the end of the day, it's not like crippling or anything. It's just kind of annoying because I would like to kind of chamfer and face the other side. And it would be nice if I could do two set ups. Not the end of the world. But if you want to do more difficult, complex parts other than an aluminum injection mold, you're probably going to run into that problem. So downside number two is coolant. So to cut metal, it's really going to get a better quality surface finish. You're going to have longer tool life if you have coolant on your tool and your part. If you've ever watched any big CNC machining videos, you know, they have like flood coolant flooding in the chamber and it's going everywhere and it's like super crazy and probably pretty awesome, right? Can't see anything, but it's pretty cool. On an open gantry style machine, you really can't do that or you'll have a, just a gigantic mess in your shop, right? If you're flooding in coolant, all that coolant has to go somewhere. And if you don't have it drained properly or anything, it's gonna go on your floor. So what I did and what most uh, people do is they set up what's called an MQL or minimum, minimum quantity lubricant system, a mister, if you will. And I got mine set up. It works pretty well. You know, it's, uh, I had a video on it. I've actually redone it. I started out using denatured alcohol because denatured alcohol has a fantastic advantage of it just evaporates pretty quickly. And so you won't have any liquid on your surface for very long, right? It shoots on there kind of does its cooling and evaporates. The Datron uh, CNC machines that are gantry based, but much higher quality, I would say, than any of the machines we've been talking about. They have a enclosed system that uses denatured alcohol and it vents it at the back. I don't have an enclosed system. I didn't have any venting. And what I found is the denatured alcohol was irritating the crap out of my eyes. I mean, I was just, my eyes were like on fire the whole time. Uh, and for days and days after, in fact, I'm still having kind of repercussions of all that DNA shall call. Could be just me. I'm allergic to the, like everything on the planet, basically. Everything irritates me. 
uh, but I had to switch from denatured alcohol to more traditional coolant, which is fine. It just makes kind of a bigger mess. And if you don't know much about coolant for metals, it's uh, oil that has a bunch of other stuff in it, mixes with water. Uh, you put it in there, you mist it on there, the water evaporates eventually and it leaves you with like this kind of oily film everywhere. So you're still spitting out liquid on your machine. You can't use an MDF spoil board. I have an HDPE spoil board, which is, you know, super nice. I got very, very lucky. I found a piece for dirt cheap on Facebook uh, when I was just starting to build my machine and I use that and it, it works great, right? One thing I do have to do is I have to use my shop vac to vacuum up the liquid and uh, eventually, you know, it just kind of gets on the floor because it, it's draining out of the bottom of my shop vac. I haven't looked at that. I don't know if there's a plug down there that's eroded or something like that, but you know, I eventually get some oily spots on my uh, floor, but it works okay. You know, you're just vacuuming while you're cutting and it's just annoying, right? If you have a real CNC machine that just drains out a drain pan in the bottom and some of them have pumps where it gets recycled after it gets filtered. Some of them you filter it out and recycle it, you know, but it's made for mass volumes of flood coolant. These gantry machines are not. Let's talk about the quality. And really, I can't say anything bad about the quality of cuts I get on this uh, Avid CNC machine. I think my molds look great, especially for someone who barely knows what they're doing when it comes to cam and machining. My lures come out looking nice and shiny. I don't wanna say perfect, but you know, certainly good enough for what I'm capable of right now. It's awesome having this capability in-house and cutting these molds. We'll get into like the actual details of the cam and the setup in some uh, upcoming videos. So if you wanna see those, make sure you hit the subscribe button so they'll show up in your feed. Actually, you probably should hit the like button because that is probably more important than the subscribe button at this point. Or, you know, hit both, bro, live dangerously. And that was really the, the most difficult part of this entire process for me was learning cam. I mean, wow, it was mind blowing how difficult that was. I have like the utmost respect for machinists and cam programmers. And I mean, God, people actually program G-code by hand. Like that's nuts. I don't think they program molds by hand, but uh, it's, a, it's a daunting process. And you know, one little mistake here, one little setting off can just ruin a part and you know, end up with a pile of parts. I do have a pile of parts that are not very good that'll end up on the wall eventually, but yeah, you know, it's all part of the game. You're gonna get into that with any CNC machine, I think. There's nothing about the Avid machine that makes it more difficult than, you know, say a Tormach or a Sile or a Haas or a Kern or whatever, right? That part is hard, really hard. But once you get that down, you know, you're, you're machining aluminum and it works great. So this is where these gantry style machines actually have a fairly good advantage over the more traditional CNC mills, especially for mold making. Most of the spindles are relatively high RPM. So I have the CNC Depot S30C, which is a tool changer spindle goes up to 24,000 RPM. And of course has a tool changer, which we'll get to in a second. But the reason you want high RPMs is the smaller diameter your end mill is, generally speaking, the faster you want to spin to get good cuts, right? So if you look at a Tormach or a Sile or a Haas, you know, those are generally in the, you know, I'd say 10,000 RPM range. You can certainly get upgrades, of course, but you know, you're just adding on more money. Some of the upgrades for like the Tormach don't uh, support tool changer when you get to higher RPM spindles. And you know, that can be certainly an inconvenience and a huge time sink if you have to sit there and babysit tool changes all the time. So that's a great advantage that these types of machines have. They generally have very fast spinning spindles that work well with smaller tooling. The availability of, of end mills and spindles and tool holders is the same on uh, the Avid CNC machines, at least with the S30C spindle, you know, it has a ER32 collet, which is standard-ish, you know, you can find them around. The end mills are the same end mills you would use anywhere else, right? I use mostly Kyocera end mills for the small stuff, and um, I think I got some Harvey end mills in there, you know, end mills are end mills, bro. They're the same end mills you would buy for any other CNC machine out there. Only downside really is going up to larger size end mills. I think it maxes out at half an inch, I think, on the ER32 collet. So you can't get, you know, really giant end mills, but you're not really gonna cut giant cuts on this machine anyways. So as you can see on these molds that I've cut, the quality of finish is, you know, certainly good enough for me. 
Uh, certainly would be good enough for anybody that's making lures to sell, which I am. And, um, you know, I can crank these out. Uh, you know, most of these take me currently about four hours per side. And I haven't really got into really digging into the programming and making it um, optimized for speed. I'm just trying to get some molds out right now that are not a hot mess. And so, you know, I kind of start with conservative numbers. I haven't really changed a lot of the, the feed rates for my tool changing or anything like that. It's all pretty vanilla, all pretty basic. And I don't really know enough to go in there and tweak tool paths too much to, to really optimize them for speed. So, you know, roughly it would take me a day to get a full two-sided molds, you know, roughly four hours uh, per side. And again, it really just totally depends on what the mold is. But um, I don't know if that would go any faster on a traditional CNC machine. You know, most of the time sink is in taking really small end mills. You know, I have like a one millimeter diameter long reach end mill that I mostly use for cutting paddle tails. And that's just a small end mill. You can't push that very fast at all. It has to go slow. I mean, that's where those RPMs come into place. But you know, I'm, I'm spending it at 24,000 RPMs and it's moving, I think nine inches a minute, which is pretty darn slow. You know, most of the other cuts are in the, the 30 to 40 inches per minute range. And so if you have a six cavity mold and you have, you know, so paddle tails, or would that be six paddle tail cuts, right? Cause it's cut in half this way. So. I mean, that just takes time. It's just gonna take time. It would take time on uh, any machine you have, I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, please, because maybe I'll go buy one of those other machines. But you know, you have to just push it slow because that machine, that, that tool can't handle a lot of pressure. It can't, you can't push it through the material fast or it's just gonna break. So I know I mentioned in a couple of my other videos about why I kind of settled on this machine. And at the time I was looking at CNC machines, I wanted to also be able to cut uh, large sheet material, specifically starboard or HDPE. I had a few parts that I wanted to make for kayaks, fishing kayaks in particular, that I was thinking about releasing to the public. And so I thought, hey, if I have to manufacture these things in large sheets, they're flat, like I need a machine to handle large sheet material. That could also cut an aluminum mold, right? Because I didn't plan on being in the mold making business and I'm not really in the mold making business. No, I won't cut a mold for you. Sorry. A huge advantage the Avid CNC has over traditional vertical mills is the actual work envelope. Uh, basically how big a piece of material it can cut. I have the Pro 48 by 48, which is, you know, has a cut area of 48 inches by 48 inches. XY travel, if you will, 48 by 48. So the Z is usually not as high. I don't even know what my Z is on this thing. It's probably like in the neighborhood of four or five inches. But you know, I'm cutting half inch aluminum nine times out of 10. So my Z travel does not have to be that great. And if you look at a traditional CNC mill, again, things that are normal for a garage shop, your you know, Tormax, your Siles, your Haas mini mills, that kind of situation, their travels are generally, uh, you know, 18 inches and less in one direction and you know, much less than that in the Y direction, right? So they usually go wide but not as deep, which can be okay for molds. But if you really want to get into like a really large mold with lots and lots of cavities, you could have a problem with that. And if you're cutting sheet materials, right, it's way more efficient to cut it on a large format machine than it is on a, a small work envelope machine, because you know, you have to cut all those little pieces up there, put them in there, cut out four parts, do all the swapping all over again. Where on this thing, you put a 48 by 48 sheet on there, cut a bazillion parts out of it in one go and you're good to go. So if your needs are, you know, kind of low volume production and you also want to do woodworking or large sheet material, then the Avid CNC machine is definitely a good call for you. I would absolutely get the S30C spindle from CNC Depot with the tool changer. I don't know how I would possibly cut molds without it. I mean, you just have to sit there and manually change tools over and over again. But, you know, at least when it's machining, I can do, be doing stuff on my computer that I have in the shop. Uh, I can't really shoot molds because of the space constraints. Um, the aluminum flies everywhere. So the other big con is these machines don't have enclosures, full enclosures, right? And the way they're kind of constructed makes it somewhat difficult to get a full enclosure around it, right? The gantry um, moves back and forth this way. NEMA stepper motor is hanging off the side. So you kind of need a slit in your enclosure to kind of handle that stuff, or you might make a much bigger enclosure, which takes up more room. It's just kind of not built for that. And what I've done is I got some kind of industrial brush stuff and kind of screwed it into the side. 
And that keeps most of the chips in place, at least the ones that fly low. There's still some that kind of fly up high and get out there, so I might need to change it up a little bit more, but I'm kind of settled in on this, at least for the time being, because I just want to cut some molds right now. So again, if you're getting a Tormach or anything like that, an actual CNC vertical mill, it is fully enclosed for most parts, right? Yes, you can buy a Tormach without the enclosure, but most people get the enclosure because it just makes life a whole lot easier. So would I recommend getting an Avid CNC machine if you want to cut aluminum injection molds? That's the wishy-washy answer here. Yes, if you also want to cut other stuff, right? So if you want to cut wood, you know, sheet material, plastics, even sheet aluminum that's, you know, you could get in larger sizes, that would be a reason I would look at the Avid CNC. Uh, and absolutely get a tool changer if you're gonna go that route. It's like a huge time saver. It's amazing. If you only want to cut aluminum injection molds, I would say no, don't buy this machine. I would look at a used Tormach, um, any sort of used kind of industrial CNC machine, which brings a lot of other things into play. Most of them revolve around power. The Tormach will run off like household power, but anything else really takes three phase, which, you know, this whole video is about that, right? But that's something to keep in mind too, is you're, you know, you're running an industrial machine in your house and uh, your house is probably not built to run industrial machinery in it. So there's gonna be some additional cost there. But, you know, I've just in the machine itself, I think I'm, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of $19,000. Uh, as I mentioned before, I'm leasing this machine, so I didn't have to come up with that cash out of hand. But, you know, you can find used Tormox for, you know, usually around 20-ish. I've seen them as low as five for kind of bare bone models. So, you know, for, I would say, a little bit more money, you could be into a used Tormox and have a machine specifically designed for cutting aluminum and make a lot of the downsides of this machine go away. And the only additional downside you have with that Tormach is that, you know, you have, generally speaking, a slower spinning spindle. So you're going to have to figure out speeds and feeds for that. Which, by the way, if you're getting into CNC machining, just download and purchase G-Wizard. I spent forever trying to figure out speeds and feeds on this thing until someone finally said, get G-Wizard. And it was like, what the heck? Why? Why have I not used this? Why isn't everybody screaming at me about this thing? It's the greatest thing ever. I'll have a link to some G-Wizard videos and the website in the bottom. But basically, you know, you put in your tool diameter, you put in your spindle speed, and it tells you what speeds and piece to use. And it's like, awesome. It's perfect every time. Like, usually what happens is I'm not pushing the tool fast enough. And G-Wizard is like, yeah, no, you need to push it fast and go crazy. And it, it works. It's great. Just, just get it, dude. If you're getting a CNC machine, if you have a CNC machine, just get G-Wizard, like everybody should have it, done. So if you wanna see how I design my molds in Fusion 360, click on this playlist right here. Otherwise, take care, Patty Lines.